So I'm standing here at a nice corner in Seattle with Ben Armstrong, one of my heroes, as I mentioned in some videos before. Uh, we have now uh, the evening of the of the MVP summit, uh, yeah. and I want to talk to you about the great stuff in Hyper-V that is coming in the in the technical preview, and maybe you can give us some more insight about other things. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, really excited to have the technical preview out there so that people can play with it. Yeah. Also, really excited about a lot of the cool technology that we have coming out in the future. Okay, maybe first we start with the technical preview. Yep. What's new in Hyper-V? So there's actually a lot of stuff yeah, it for is. technology. <laughs> there's a huge amount of stuff. And what makes me really happy is there's a lot of stuff which I can point at and go, we did that because people told us that that's what they wanted. So of course the biggest thing is we finally have rolling cluster upgrade. Yeah. We can do upgrade with zero downtime, zero new hardware, all in place. It's fantastic to have. Yeah. And um, yeah. It is a nice experience. I, I, I have not played with it. And I had not the time. Shame, shame on you. But I will, <laughs> of course. And But I know a lot of customers needed that. Yes. Yeah, now you can um, have a cluster with new systems and uh, move VMs around. That's yep. a live migration feature. And I mean, the, the reality is we can do all these cool new features and all the things we want. If it's hard for people to get to the latest release, what's the point? Yeah. You know, so we want to make sure that people can get to their latest release and take advantage of all the, the work that's going on. Yeah. So you have the rolling cluster upgrade yep. and um, but people don't have or, or maybe they want to have mixed clusters. Yep. That's not the goal, I think. It's only for upgrading for a short time. Huh? Correct. You know, for, for inside a cluster, we definitely want you to be rolling through it quickly and getting up. One of the big things, though, that we've done on the Hyper-V side is we've made it so that you can keep virtual machines compatible with 2012 R2. So if you have mixed clusters, so yeah. if you have a, a cluster that's running on technical preview for evaluation, you can move a virtual machine into it using okay. cross-cluster live migration. And and then you can move it straight back out. You know, so you can play around. We want to make sure that we have complete mobility and flexibility yeah. in what you want to do. Okay, there's something else. If I'm on VNX, yep. um, there is some new features there. There are and lots uh, of new features. You have to do something with the virtual yes, machine, right? you do need to upgrade the virtual machine in order to play with all the new features. Once you've done that, of course, you can't live migrate it back. So that's kind of the trade-off okay. there. If it's a virtual machine that you're going to want to pull back, then you need to, to leave it at the 2012 R2 version. If you want to take advantage of the new features, then you need to upgrade it. Okay, so this is the process you uh, shut down the machine, Yep. do the migration to the new version. So we just have a simple PowerShell commandlet. Okay. Uh, it's update VM configuration version. Shut down the VM, run update configuration version. You'll get a little com confirmation saying, hey, there's no going back. And then you can upgrade the VM. It's exactly, you know, same VM, same functionality, but now you have extra features. Okay, cool. What else is there in uh, the technical preview? There are so many things. So we can do hot add and remove of network adapters. That's cool. Uh, we can do online resize of memory for virtual machines that don't have dynamic memory enabled. That's also cool. Um, we have improvements for remote management. So we now do uh, remote management of a WinRM with alternate credentials. Uh, we have new functionality called production and checkpoints, which I'm really excited about. Yeah, and I, I want to uh, dig a little bit deeper in this. Uh, in the past, checkpoints uh, are not supported for production environments. You Correct. had something else in mind with uh, with checkpoints. Maybe you can allude a little yeah, bit about so, that. And what's the new thing? So when we first built checkpoints, we really designed this for dev test and training labs where mm -hmm. we're like, hey, this will be great. You'll build a big tree of checkpoints that you no, know, you personally can roll back and forth in, in your test environment and so on. Uh, we did not design this for production servers, but we put it out there and everyone uses it for yeah. production servers. You know, and the story we hear time and time again is, you know, I've got a production server, I'm about to do something dangerous, so I take a checkpoint and I do my dangerous thing. And if everything is okay, I delete the checkpoint and if something goes wrong, I roll back. Well, and, and it works quite well, but... Except there's a lot of software for production servers where that rollback isn't a great idea. You don't want a checkpoint which has all the memory state yeah. of that running server. 
Okay. So what we've done is with production checkpoints, we have exactly the same user experience that you get with checkpoints, the easy creation, easy management, so on. However, now when you roll back, rather than rolling back to all the in-memory state of, say, your SQL server or your Exchange server or so on, what you're doing is you're rolling back to a clean system backup that was taken when you said to take that checkpoint. Okay. So it's great, the same user experience, but now completely supported for production and environments. Now it's supported. So yeah. uh, if I have a problem with that, there is help available for yeah. Microsoft. Yeah, you know, and it's just, you know, because we're just using all the backup infrastructure that all these applications use and support yeah. for exactly this sort of workflow, only it's a whole lot easier. Okay, cool. You said backup. Um, there is improvement in backup in, in, in Windows Server 2012. We've article. been doing a huge yeah. amount of work in backup. Um, I am actually really excited. Right now we're working with a number of our backup partners to get them to build solutions on top of this. But, you know, one of the big things that we heard from 2012 or 2 was that, hey, Hyper-V backup works well until I try and do it at cloud scale. Yeah. You know, and we have lots of customer stories about people trying to back up, you know, thousands of virtual machines and a large Hyper-V cluster and everything just falling apart. So we've done a huge amount of work to really increase the scalability and reliability of Hyper-V backup. Um, and, you know, really looking forward to, to seeing the backup partners come in and deliver some awesome solutions on top of that. Okay. So is there something else in technical preview you want to, to, to allude on? Because there's so many stuff. There, there are so many things, and I'm sure I'm going to forget some, and I'm going to feel bad about the, the things that I forget. Uh, so we did have the, I will say, we did have the session at TechEd Europe, the Hyper-V sneak peek. Yeah. Uh, definitely encourage people to check that out because we go over all the features. I'm just trying to think through it. I know we've done work on Hyper-V Replica. It now works cross-version as well. We also added the ability to do hot atom remover virtual hard drives to the replica set. Cool, that was yeah. a big uh, customer request that we've got. Yeah. We have improvements on storage costs. Oh my goodness. This is a great one. I could spend 30 minutes just talking <laughs> about all the stuff we did on storage costs. Uh, we've done work on a set of features that we call VM resiliency, which okay. is really exciting. Yeah. This is about making it so that even when you have hardware failures in a Hyper-V cluster, that we still manage to keep those VMs running and we're as robust and resilient to hardware failure as possible. Um, the list just goes on. There is so much stuff in the right, release. Yeah. Uh, but the storage cores thing, in Windows Server 2012 R2 you introduced the storage cores yep. so you can limit the VMs so uh, that they don't chew up all your IOPS yep. and there was a minimum, uh, It's uh, it, it was not always working, So now you, you have done something else. Yeah, so we, we had the minimum in 2012 R2, but it wasn't actually an enforced minimum, we would just let you know if the minimum wasn't yeah. being met. Um, and one of the challenges that we had with Minimum was if you had a whole bunch of Hyper-V servers talking to a single piece of storage on the back end, yeah. well, those Hyper-V servers didn't know about each other. Yeah. Um, so what we've actually done is we've worked really closely with the Scale-Out File Server team so that we can actually now define storage cost policies on the Scale-Out File Server. And that actually, that lights up two really interesting scenarios in my mind. The first one, as you've mentioned, is you can now go in and say, you know what, rather than setting maximums on my noisy VMs, I'm going to go to my important VMs and I'm going to say these ones need a minimum yeah. guarantee. And it's actually the scale-out file server that guarantees that like, no matter how many Hyper-V servers are talking to me, those virtual hard drives, those virtual machines get their requirement. The other thing, though, I think this is actually kind of neat, is we also now allow you to take a set of virtual machines, a set of virtual hard drives, and say, this set should have a, a shared maximum. So, if it's cool for hosters, so yeah. a customer who has some virtual machines get, uh, get a guarantee 
I, I owe a amount for these set for, of machines. For a group. And then the yeah. customer gets to control where it goes. You know, and if they have idle VMs that aren't doing much, then their IOPS gets freed up for other yeah. VMs that are busy. But you can have complete control over this at a group level, yeah. which I think is actually really this cool. Is a, this is an advantage because you have now also the storage stack. You have the whole stack. You have Hyper-V, the cluster. You have the scale-out file server and even storage spaces. Yep. So it's really great. And it could be all managed by system center. Yeah, ab absolutely. So, Ben, maybe you can give us a little peek to the futures, what maybe is not in technical preview. Is this possible? Yeah, abso is there a favorite absolutely. Feature of you? Yeah, yes, and you already know my answer. <laughs> yeah, I know. I've it. been really excited this week at MVP Summit that we've had a chance to go deep talking about the work that we're doing on Windows containers. Um, we've announced publicly that we're working on Windows containers. Yeah. We have the partnership with Docker. This is some really cool new technology, and uh, I am just really eager to be I'm looking forward to the day when we get this into people's hands yeah. because it is a new way to think about running applications in an isolated manner. Um, it's got some different properties to virtual machines and I'm really looking forward to seeing what people actually do with containers. Yeah. So we have now virtual machines. Yep. You have an operating system in a virtual machine. It's, it takes a lot of, uh, of the resources and Container is something else. Yep. Uh, you told us there's a process now. It's like of like uh, like isolation of something, and there's a VM, and the container is between that. Yes. So you get you, you get, get more more uh, more out of your hardware maybe, and uh, yeah, containers are really interesting because they give you some of the isolation of virtual machines and some of the portability of virtual machines, but some of the lightweight, fast start and stop and so on of processes. And it's a really interesting middle point. You know, I showed you guys what this looks like on Linux today and you know, to kind of give you an idea of what we're building of, on Windows. And it's going to be really interesting. Yeah. You know, one of the things I was uh, chatting to some of the MVPs just earlier about is, you know, obviously, We've been looking at Windows containers for developers and going, this is going to be great for people who want to develop an application, spin it up quickly, test it out, so on. But I've also been looking at containers for people who are traditional infrastructure virtual machine people. So like in my own environment, I have a, I have a VM at home that's an SMTP relay. Yeah, And I have an entire OS. I have a gig of memory. I have 20 gig of storage just to give me a nice it's portable one, one thing. Yeah. And it doesn't need all the isolation that a VM gives me. I can certainly happily trade off some of that isolation to get back a whole bunch of resources. So I'm going to be really curious to see how people use containers. I will play with it. Yeah. I'm I and when I saw your session, I get very interested in this stuff, and uh, I'm thinking about what you can all do with it. Yep. And I think in Windows there will be in the future, not in the next maybe. There are a lot of things that can be put in containers. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, so two things here. The first thing is I, you know, personally, as I said, really looking forward to getting the V1 out so that people can play with it. But over the next couple of years, I think containers and container technology really going to change the IT landscape. You know, and I'm really looking forward to seeing the new ideas and the new approaches that people come up with. It's been fascinating for me because I'm working on the core team that's putting together the plumbing for this. And even as we're building containers, I have developers on the core team going, you know what? We could actually use containers yeah, to, to go and solve some of the problems yeah. that we have. Um, so I think it's going to be quite revolutionary in what it does to the system and to the IT landscape. Oh, so I'm amazed how many stuff you built in only one or one and a half years. It's unbelievable. And uh, we came here to the MVP Summit and we were re really amazed what, what all in it in the next version. So uh, great. I'm looking forward to the next MVP uh, yep. Summit. And, uh, and I, hopefully you have another bag I, of I nice can, things. I can guarantee we're not slowing down. We're working hard and we will have, you know, even more stuff to talk about next time. <laughs> okay, thank you, Ben, yep. for the interview. And you have a blog. It's yep. a virtual PC guy. And there are a lot of information yep. about the new stuff. And you will blog about it. Ab uh, absolutely, so absolutely. Okay, cool. Thank you very much.